Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. On this special live edition of MacMost, I'm going to look at all sorts of different ways to control your Mac with just your keyboard. As always, MacMost is brought to you thanks to its great Patreon supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon to learn more about the Patreon campaign and join us there. Get course discounts and all of that. So what I want to talk about today in this special live episode are all sorts of different ways to control your Mac with your keyboard. So you've got things like keyboard shortcuts. You've got custom keyboard shortcuts. You've got system stuff and hidden keyboard shortcuts. You've got things like text replacements. You've got custom things uh, in different apps. You've got accessibility functions. All sorts of different things. I have a huge list of different ways to control your Mac with your keyboard. Each one of these could be its own episode. But I'm just putting them all together here. and I'm just going to talk about it here in this special live edition. And um, let's go ahead and get started. Notice at the bottom corner here I've got this little keyboard here. It's the on-screen keyboard for your Mac. And the reason I have it here is that I can hold the Shift key down on my keyboard and you can see the Shift key is being held down there. Uh, hold the Command key. You can see it's being held down there. So as I show things I'm going to call out what keyboard shortcuts I'm using. But you can also see them visually on this little keyboard here. So let's start with the basics. Right, The most basic thing for keyboard shortcuts is the keyboard shortcuts you find in the menu bar. So whatever app you're using on the Mac, whether it's uh, the Finder, a built-in app, a third-party app, you've got the menu bar. Unless it's some special utility or a game or something, you're going to have a menu bar here. And the menu bar is part of the system. The app doesn't have to build the menu bar from scratch. It basically calls out to the system and says, here's the menu items in the menu bar. And the menu bar comes with functionality including keyboard shortcuts. So in the Finder, for instance, if I go to File, I could see New Finder Window is Command N. I could see New Folder is Shift Command N. And I could see all these other keyboard shortcuts here. And these are built in to each app by the developer. So the developer decides on the keyboard shortcuts. In this case, the Finder, of course, is from Apple. But if you're looking at a third-party app, whoever made that app decides on those keyboard shortcuts. You could see them all here. And it's important to know the little special symbols here. Like, for instance, this symbol here is the Command key. If you look on your keyboard, you'll see Command there. That's Shift. That's Control. And you'll find other ones as well. As a matter of fact, let's switch over to the keyboard here and we can see some of these. Here is the Command key. Uh, here's the Control key. Here is Option. There's Shift. And there's one more I want to point out, the Fn or Globe key. These are known as the modifier keys on your keyboard because you don't typically use them by themselves, although you can in some situations. Typically you modify what's going on by using this uh, key. So for instance, pressing the letter C is just the letter C. You type C. But Command C is usually copy. So the Command key modifies the C key to be a command, copy. And you can use these in combination. So there will be some keyboard shortcuts that aren't, say, Command C but Shift Option Command C. And that's uh, what we're going to be looking at a lot here. If you look here at these keyboard shortcuts, you can see like this is Shift Command N for New Folder. So for most things that you want to do in whatever app you're working in, like here in TextEdit, for instance, you could find a keyboard shortcut. If I wanted to make text bold, I go to Format and then I can go down to Font and Bold and you can see Command B is the keyboard shortcut. So instead of using the mouse or trackpad at all, I can just use the keyboard. Command B will make that bold and it toggles it. So Command B again will take away the bold and make it plain. And that's the basics. Most things are going to have keyboard shortcuts in the menus here. You can see how many there are. I mean, just about everything's got them. The developer is going to figure out like which of these menu items are used the most often and it's going to make sure that there are good keyboard shortcuts there for them. However, sometimes there are items that don't have keyboard shortcuts. And sometimes these items are things you want to use and the developer didn't think that you'd need keyboard shortcuts, but you do. For instance, just to take an example here, under Format Font there's Outline. No keyboard shortcut for Outline. The only way to use Outline appears to be under 
format, font, outline selected using your trackpad or mouse. Boom. You've got outline. But wouldn't it be great to have a keyboard shortcut for that if you did need to use it for some reason all the time? Well, you can customize keyboard shortcuts by going to System Preferences. So this is outside of the app in System Preferences for the whole system. You can do this. If we go into System Preferences here, we go to Keyboard here, and then we go from Keyboard to Shortcuts. And then from there we see this whole list on the left of different keyboard shortcuts. We're going to be looking at this more during this live video, but you'll notice different categories here that do different things. A lot of these are things that don't have menu items. Like for instance, screenshots. There's no menu item control here for screenshots. But there are all these screenshot commands. They're kind of system-wide. You can think of them as hidden because they're not shown up here. And this is where you control what they are, whether or not they're even active. At the very bottom of this list is something called App Shortcuts, which I think should actually be called Custom Shortcuts because that's what it really is. This allows you to create custom shortcuts. So we can go down here at App Shortcuts, click the Plus button, select which application we're creating a shortcut for. Now the default is All Applications, but rarely do you want to use that. For instance, we're going to create one for the Outline command. Most apps aren't going to have an Outline command. It's only going to be in things where you edit text and such. So let's go and select this and then go down to Text Edit. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut right there just to jump to T and go to Text Edit and say for Application Text Edit I want to create a shortcut for Outline. Now I need to type the menu title. That's how it knows which menu item to create the custom shortcut for. We want to go and double check what that is. If I go into Format, Font, and there it's Outline. Look at it closely. Capital O and then spelled Outline. Don't worry about the fact that it's in the Font submenu or the Format menu. Those don't matter. It's this word right here, Outline, and getting that exactly right. I have to type that perfectly. So a place people get really tripped up here is actually having a menu item they want to assign a shortcut for and they type what they think is exactly the menu item but they're using the word as instead of in or they don't capitalize something and if it's not perfect it's not going to work. Then we're going to do the keyboard shortcut. So what should we do here? Uh, well, we could do Command O for Outline. I mean Command B is for Bold. But probably you know that Command O is Standard Shortcut for Open. So let's not use that. Let's use Command Option O. And you can see it puts it right there. Add. And now we can see it listed here. Command Option O. Outline in Text Edit. Let's go back to Text Edit here. Go to Format, Font, and Outline and it shows that custom shortcut there. So now let's try it. Command Option O, Outline. And it will toggle it back and forth just like the menu item here would toggle it back and forth. So that's how you add a custom shortcut. Getting rid of it is really easy. You just go back to the same spot here. You can select it. You can change it if you made a mistake, if you didn't get the, the menu item correct. You can change this if you want to try something different. Don't be afraid to try different uh, shortcuts for something because a question I commonly get is, well, how do you know if like Command Option O is in use by something? Is there a list somewhere? There's no list because each app is separate and has its own uh, set of shortcuts. But don't let that stop you. Don't let that go, you know, if you think, okay, Option Command O might work. Let's try it. And if it turns out, oh, wait, now I just realized Option Command O is used for something else, then you can always go back here and change it to something else. It's not like your whole machine is going to shut down because you chose the same keyboard shortcut. It's not going to be a real problem. So you can change it here. You can also, with it selected, just hit minus and now it's gone. So it's easy to add and then kind of remove it if you decide you don't want it later on. So that's how you do custom keyboard shortcuts. But um, I want to say that you know one of the things here is that you don't always want a keyboard shortcut for everything because you can't remember them all and there's going to be more and more conflicts the more you add. Sometimes you just want to access things from the menu using the keyboard without the trackpad or mouse. You don't need quick access to it. You just want some access through the keyboard. Well. You can access anything in the menu using the keyboard without assigning a keyboard shortcut to it. It's just going to take a few more steps. So first thing you want to do is you want to find a way to select things in the menu item. Now if you 
click in the menu here. So I click there. I have used the mouse or trackpad. But now from this point on I'm only going to use the keyboard. I can use the down arrow, you see, to go through the menu items. I can use the right arrow to go into a submenu. Down arrow to go here. And then return and it will select that item. I didn't have anything selected here. Let's try that again. Font, outline, return. There. It worked. Except that the first thing I had to do was click here. Can we eliminate that? Yes. Let's go to System Preferences again. And if I go into Keyboard here, there's an item. Move Focus to the Menu Bar. Control F2. Great. Let's give that a try. So here I am. I don't want to touch the mouse or trackpad. I'm going to use Control F2. And you can see, if you look closely, the Apple menu is now highlighted. And if I use the right arrow, it now highlights text edit, file, edit, format, then down, down again, font to the right, down, 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 return. I did it without any mouse or trackpad use. I didn't have to take my hands off the keyboard. Very useful when you want just keyboard control, but it's not like I'm going to use Outline over and over again. It might be the only time I use it today or this week or this month. But I just wanted to access it with the keyboard instead of using the mouse or trackpad. Now there are other ways to get to the menu bar. I want to show you one thing first. It's important. It says here Control F2. But that's very dependent on something else. If I go to Keyboard here, see this checkbox? This checkbox determines how the F keys on your keyboard or the touch bar, if you have a touch bar Mac, uh, work. Because if you look at each of those keys, there are actually two keys in one. For instance, the F1 and F2 keys are F1 and F2 and also screen brightness, down and up. Uh, other keys control volume and playback controls, things like that. So there are two ways to think of these. One is F keys or function keys. The other as special feature keys. Special features are like brightness, volume control, playback controls. The symbols at the top. If you have this checked, then just hitting those keys will make them work as the F1, F2, and F3 keys. But if you turn this off, now every time you press them they're going to work as the special keys like volume, control, up and down. You can see I'm using F11 and F12 on my keyboard here and you can see how it's, that's working. If I select these you can see how they change to the F keys. The Fn key I'll let you, let you toggle this. So if I have this off, now they're special feature keys. If I hold the Fn key down you can see how they change on that little keyboard there at the bottom left to F keys. So the FN key toggles this in a live way. The checkbox is the default. So having this checked means they work as F keys which are the most useful to us right now doing keyboard shortcuts. But something to keep in mind. Great. So are there other ways to access the menu? Yes. Turns out there's uh, two other ways. First is there's a new command in Mac OS Monterey. The FN key is actually now known as the globe key. And new Macs have a globe and the letters FN on the key. Older Macs like mine just have FN which is why you see FN on that little keyboard there. But if you hold that FN key down and then you press M, notice the Apple menu at the top left. That's highlighted. The FN or globe key and M works just like Control F2. So a second way to get to it. And maybe a little easy to remember. I mean FN or globe and M. M for menu. Right? Okay. So there's another way. There is a keyboard shortcut. and We can actually look at it in System Preferences here under Shortcuts. Uh, it is right here in App Shortcuts. There's one here that's not a customizable one. It's always here. Show Help Menu. Shift, Command, and the Slash key. Slash also has the question mark on it. So Shift, Slash is question mark. Easy way to remember this is Command, Question Mark. And that brings up the Help Menu. Watch. Shift, Command, Question mark. It brings up the Help menu. Now you're typing in to search Help. But you also have the Help menu selected. So instead of starting on the Apple menu on the left you're starting at the Help menu on the right. Now I can use the arrow keys and go to the left and do the same thing that I did before to select Outline there. I like this a little bit better partially because in older versions of Mac OS Control F2 didn't always work. It worked like 98% of the time. but Command Shift question mark worked 100% of the time. And I like it because you can do other cool things with the Help menu. 
So I'm going to activate it with just the keyboard and you can see how it's searching help. You would think that this if you search would give you documentation and it does. If you type something in here it will show you documentation for that command. But it also does something else. It will show you where a command is located. So if I start typing outline notice that it shows me four menu items. And these correspond to menu items that have the word outline in them now. Now undo and redo both have outline in them because I've recently used outline. Font outline is what we're looking for. And then there's also something called zoom out. Right? I just typed out. If I typed out and then L you can see that's gone. So notice here I don't have to go to those help items. I can just go down now with the down arrow and I can get to the one I want. And notice it shows me where that is. It's under format, font, outline. So I can learn where it is. If I've forgotten where outline is this is a way to figure it out. I can learn where it is for next time. Or I can just activate it from this menu either by clicking under the Help menu where it says Font Outline or hitting Return. So if I want to do Outline I could do it like this. Shift Command question mark. Start typing. Go down to the one I want. Return. And you can see it turns it off. I could do that with any menu item. So maybe there is a keyboard shortcut but I forget what the keyboard shortcut is. Maybe I forget what the keyboard shortcut is for Bold. I do Shift Command question mark. I start typing bold. There it is. Down arrow. Return. Bold. Complete access to everything in the menu using Shift Command question mark and the Help menu. I think this is like one of the coolest keyboard shortcuts of them all and, um, and it's one I use all the time. I don't need to have access all the time to every command but I like to be able to get to it from the keyboard if I, if I can. Great. So let's take a look at some other things here. Um, let's go to App Switching. So I have a variety of apps open now. And the great thing is, is I can switch between them using just the keyboard. The command for that is Command Tab. And you continue to hold the Command key down. As long as you hold the Command key down after the first Command Tab the App Switcher remains on the screen and I can switch between all of my apps. If I stop on an app and lift up on the Command key the app is unhidden or comes to the front. Command Tab again and I can just tab through it loops. If I hold the Shift key down it goes backwards and loops. So I can go through each thing there. Easy way to switch apps. You can also do other keyboard shortcuts in the App Switcher. So let's say I want to hide Pages. While I'm over it I'm still holding the Command key down. I can use the H key and it hides Pages. Another H will unhide it. And you can see it back there behind. It's not going to bring it to the front unless I release. You could also quit. If I want to quit Pages I can use Q to quit. I won't do that right now. But I can use Q to quit. So you can go through and say Q, 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 and Q and quit a whole bunch of stuff using just the App Switcher. So the App Switcher is kind of useful and it's all keyboard controlled. But I often get asked, oh, how can you switch between windows? Here I'm going to open up another window and text edit. I've got two text edit windows. You can see under Window here. I actually have three. I have one that has my notes on another screen and I've got these two. I can switch between windows using the command to switch windows which isn't uh, okay. I thought it was in there but it's not in there. It is in System Preferences though. Uh, if you go here Move Focus to Next Window Command and then the little back tick key which is above the key, the Tab key on the keyboard here. So Command Back Tick it switches to the next Text Edit Window then the next one which is the one you can't see off screen and then the next one. You could switch between windows using that. So really handy to do. Um, you also of course have Mission Control. Mission Control is Control Up Arrow and this is where you ac access multiple desktops where you can have full screen apps. So I can go for instance let's go into Pages here make Pages full screen. I'll do Control Up Arrow and now you can see I've got Desktop 1 and Pages as two different spaces. I could also say add another desktop. I've got three desktops or two desktops and Pages there. I can use Control Up Arrow to go here and there's really not much else I can do in here. I can't use the arrow keys to do anything. But if I want to switch between spaces with the keyboard I can do Control Right Arrow and Control Left Arrow. Really handy. So you can have many full screen apps or many desktops 
and easily switch between them using Control left arrow and Control right arrow. And let's go and uh, get rid of all these extra desktops here. Let's take a look at some other things that you can do. One is something called App Exposé which is Control down arrow, keyboard shortcut. App Exposé will bring up the windows you have open in that app. You can see I have two here. And in many apps, the recent document to the bottom. And this can be controlled by the keyboard. If I use the right arrow, notice how the recents here at the bottom are highlighted. And I can actually select one if I want. I can go up and you can see I can go between these two windows. So if I had seven text edit windows open, a quick control down arrow, and then I can use the arrow keys to go around in this list of recent and current documents and get to the one I want. So really handy there. Um, a few other things I want to show you. Uh, there's Spotlight, of course. For app launching, Spotlight is really useful. Command Space brings up Spotlight right here. Uh, let me center it there. Spotlight Search. Now you can use Spotlight to do a bunch of things, keyboard only. So if I want to launch an app like Calculator, I can just type the app name. The app's usually the first thing highlighted there. I can press Return. It launches the app. Command Space. And I could do all sorts of other things, including get to System Preferences. If I start typing Bluetooth, for instance, um, I should be able to get to the Bluetooth System Preferences. There you go. It takes a second to appear. You can see there's an app there, but there's also System Preferences. You can see it says System Preferences there in the preview. And I could press Return and get to System Preferences using it. And of course, also you could get to files. So you know, I could do you know test.txt, and I could find the file that way. Um, quick way to navigate to a file without having to um, you know use the Finder at all. So Spotlight is a very handy keyboard only technique for finding things. And if you want to go like through the items here like oh maybe this file isn't the one I want, I can go down arrow, I can go to this one, command down arrow jumps down to the next section. Uh, you get a preview on the right. If you don't see a preview to the right, you can usually use the right um, the or the tab to show it, but there's nothing to show here in this case. Uh, you can get to things like searching the web. So you can actually do a web search here without launching the browser first. And I could search the web for test.txt if I wanted to for some reason. Or start a finder search here as well. There's some other cool things you can do. For instance, if I wanted to uh, get to this file and I don't want to open the file. I just want to see where it is. I can use Command R here in Spotlight. And it will open up a new finder window and take me there. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can do things like uh, if you wanted to look up a word you can do I think Command L. Um, Let's see. I thought Command L, Shift Command L, Option Command L. Uh, I thought it took you to the definition. Um, Command B will do a search with whatever you had in Spotlight. So you can start a web search by simply Command Space. You type the search what you want to search and do Command B, and there you are in your default browser searching. So some cool things to do in Spotlight. But I don't actually like the idea of using Spotlight to launch apps. Why? Well remember when I typed calc and you can see there it took a second for calculators to appear as the first item. A better way to do it is Launchpad. Now Launchpad is down here. You have to go to the dock and click it. Some of us have keys on our keyboard that are specific for Launchpad. The newer Macs don't. But you can go into System Preferences and then you can go to Keyboard. And then one of the things here, Launchpad and Dock, Show Launchpad. And I've set it here to Control Spacebar. You're going to have to set it to something. I believe it's blank by default. And then make sure it's turned on. So instead of Command Spacebar for Spotlight, I do Control Spacebar for Launchpad. Now I know some of you are like, oh, Launchpad, it's, it's a mess. I don't use Launchpad. I'm suggesting not to use it by clicking with the mouse or trackpad, but use it just like you would Spotlight. So in Spotlight, if I wanted to run Calculator, I do Command Space. Calc. Wait for Calculator to appear. Return. There's Calculator. Now let me do the same thing with Launchpad. I've got Control Space. Calc. And you can see how it narrows it down. Return. And Calculator launches. The difference being it doesn't seem to have any delay. And it's only apps. right? You're not going to get documents and 
uh, dictionary definitions and you know sports scores and all that stuff. It's just for apps. So I like setting a keyboard shortcut and using Launchpad to launch apps. But let's uh, look at one other thing you can do. Down here the dock of course has your most common apps. You can ac actually do a lot in the dock with just the keyboard. Uh, to access the dock you've got to go uh, in, in System Preferences, let's see, under Shortcuts, Launchpad and Dock. You can turn dock hiding on and off here with Option Command D which is really useful. Uh, but Move Focus to Dock is usually Control F3. So let's do that. Control F3 and it brings up the dock and notice how the finder is selected. And I can use the arrow key to move to what I want and let's say I want to launch Reminders, Return and Reminders launches. That's kind of handy. You can also use one of those new function keys, Fn or the globe key in D and it should get you the dock. Not sure why it's not right there. Well, let's just stick with Control F3. And notice how it stays on Reminders too. It doesn't go back to the Finder. Plus you can access other things in the dock. So for instance I can go and go up and I get the menu for Reminders, uh, for Contacts, for Calendar. And you can go down into Options. You can use the arrow keys to access all this stuff. So some of these have special functions. Like here in Safari I can go to a window in Safari, create a new window, a new private window, show all windows. I can quit right from in the dock. Launchpad I go up and actually I get the list of all the apps in alphabetical order. And I can use a key to jump to a letter. So that's kind of handy. Finder has got all sorts of extra you know, favorites and uh, common things in here. So you have like full dock access using the keyboard. Uh, Control F3. Um, I'm pretty sure that Fn and D is supposed to, to do the same thing or the globe key and D is supposed to do the same thing. Um, oh no. It's not Fn and D. It is Fn and A. Fn and D turns on and off dictation. We're going to look at that in a minute here actually because that's kind of interesting. So Fn and A is dock or Control F3. Either one. And you have complete control. Dock. dock is great as a switcher, as a launcher, and being able to do various different things in the dock. Um, now let's take a look at keyboard navigation when you're talking about text. Because that's a whole other thing. Let's go back here to text edit. And I want to edit text. And this is a primary spot where I want to keep my hands on the keyboard. Because if I'm typing, I don't want to have to lift off both my hands. Maybe I have them on the home row. You know, maybe that's how I type. Every, every time I touch the mouse or keyboard, it kind of, you know, puts me off, and I have to get back into typing mode. So you can do a lot with just the keyboard. Obviously, you can use the arrow keys, left and right, to move the cursor. And this blinking line here, you can see just before the word jumps, between after Fox, right there. That's actually the cursor. This is actually the pointer. Anything you move with the um, the trackpad or mouse, the pointer. This is the cursor, text cursor. So I can move back and forth, and it's really handy when editing text because sometimes you want to go back, add a word here, or whatever. If you hold the Option key down, it will jump by word because if you have a lot of text, it's tough to you know backspace over everything. Let's actually uh, open up a recent file here, uh, something with more text in it. There we go. And I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. Uh, if I'm here and I want to like backspace all the way, you know, I can hold down the left arrow key and it'll eventually get there. But Option will go by word. So Option left goes by word. Option right goes by word. Much faster if you're editing text to use Option left and right to get where you want. You can also use Down and Up to jump by line. But Option Down will go to the end of the current paragraph or if you're already at the end it will go to the end of the next paragraph. Option Up goes to the beginning of the current paragraph and the next time goes to the beginning of the previous paragraph. So you can jump through your text pretty quickly with Option Up and Down. Um, you've got lots of other cool things that you can do in text editing. You can do 
Um, if you have Home and End buttons on your keyboard, if you have an extended keyboard, you could do End to go to the end and Home to go home. It just scrolls. It doesn't change where the cursor is. But if you don't have those, you still can use the Fn key and I believe it's, let's see, uh, left and right. Left goes Home, right goes End. Now, Page Up and Page Down, if you have those, actually does move the cursor and it scrolls through. You can use Fn and down arrow and up arrow as page up, page down. So they are handy to use. Um, you've got selection. If you want to select something, let's say, okay, uh, I'm going to use the keyboard, go here, and let's say I want to make this bold. Um, I need to select it first. I can hold the shift key down and right arrow, oh, I hit an extra key there, shift, right arrow, and keep right arrowing and select something. As long as the shift key is held down, it will extend the selection. If I lift up the shift key and use the arrow you can see the selection goes away. I can use that conjunction with any of those other shortcuts. So Option Shift right arrow selects this word, next word, next word, next word. Very quickly now I can Command B to bold that. So if you want to do uh, the same thing with like Option Shift down arrow you know you can go by paragraph that kind of thing. So really handy to know those and that Shift can help you do the uh, the uh, selection. There's some weird ones too. There's an old program called Emacs that was for terminals, and you still have uh, still have it. Actually, I don't know if you have it anymore in terminal on a Mac, but it's a, a text editor that was in the terminal days before mouse uh, uh, mice and keyboards were around. And there were some standard keyboard controls there because they didn't have a lot of terminals didn't have arrow keys and stuff. So a lot of those still work in most Mac text editing apps. So for instance, if I do control, the control key, not command, and B, it goes back. F goes forward. If I do A, it goes up or at the beginning of the paragraph and E to the end of the paragraph. If I do P, it goes up line and down line. If I do control and H, it deletes. So Another way to use a delete key is Control H. Ever want forward delete on a Mac? I know Windows users, you know, switched. I really want forward delete. Well, you can do Control and D for forward delete. Also, you can use the delete key on your Mac with the FN key held down. So FN and delete is forward delete. That's what I would use. Although as a lifelong Mac user, I never forward delete. It only seems to be Windows users that need that. Um, you also have uh, other ways to deal with things. One is, oh, this is a weird one. Control T transposes two letters. So you see the T and H there with the blinking cursor between them. Control T transposes them. Okay. Um, Control O is kind of useful. Control O inserts a new line at this location, but leaves the the uh, cursor there. If I do return, you can see the cursor is at the next line. If I do Control O. It creates a new paragraph, but the cursor is still at the old paragraph. And finally, there's you probably know. Obviously, you can do uh, copy and paste. If I select something, I can copy, I can cut, I can paste. I can use the keyboard shortcuts for that. So can Command X will cut, and Command V will paste. There are Emacs commands for the same thing, but it's not the same thing. It's going to use a different buffer. So if I select some text like that. And I use Control K for kill. It deletes what's there, but puts it in a buffer. Now, if I do Control Y, it yanks it from the buffer and puts it back. K and Y, kill and yank. But it's different than copy and paste. So if I were to copy, say, this word, Command C, and kill this word, Control K, and then go here and do Command V to paste. And then do Control Y to yank. You can see it's getting it from two different places. Kind of neat stuff. Um, let's. That's pretty much most of what I want to show for text stuff. I, I do want to point out there's text replacements as well. So let's switch back here. And let's say uh, I go to System Preferences again, into Keyboard, and change to Text, 
and then look at text replacements. And you can see I've got some set here. The idea is you hit plus here. You type something that you would never in a million years type normally. Uh, like maybe st a word starting with an exclamation point. You know, an ABC. And then over here you type you know something else. And it could be you know long. It could be a whole paragraph or whatever it is you want. And now whenever I'm in a text entry kind of mode I can type this exactly and then the next thing I press space or return or whatever it replaces it. Really handy. I mean you could put like a bunch of paragraphs in there. Sometimes what you want to do is like take this and copy it and then go here and then you go in and you, you know, paste it in here. And you know, then it's like several lines of text. Um, you could always select it and remove it. I'll remove that one. I've got some other stuff set here uh, like uh, the exclamation point thanks does this entire thing here. Um, you can have you know just a single character like an emoji pizza character. You know, so like let's try these if I do you know thanks and then return. It puts that whole thing in there. Quick way to respond to an email. Uh, pizza like that or was that the uh, or was it dot pizza? Yeah, dot pizza does that. So now I don't have to remember how to get to the you know that emoji if I do that all the time. It's kind of handy. Um, so yeah, so more uh, Mac shortcuts here. Oh, before I finish completely with text, let's go over to Pages. I want to show you one interesting thing in Pages. Say I want to uh, change the style to something. I want to make this say title style. I can click here and make a title style. There is a way to set a keyboard shortcut for that. If you go here and you go to title, oh, sorry, here and then I click on this little arrow. There you can see there's a shortcut and I can set an F key from F1 to F8 as a shortcut here. So I can easily set that. The same thing for character styles. Let me bring this over so I can set a character style like here's the emphasis character style. I can do shortcut and that's underneath me but you can see how uh, that is just F1 to F8. Same thing for uh, keynote and numbers. So really handy if you have a certain style you want to use for emphasis. You know, it's like maybe a color and a font and a size and it's bold. You know, you could set like that as F4 and then you know, select text and hit F4 for it. Works in pages, numbers and keynote. If you're using something else like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word has its own whole universe of like macros and keyboard shortcuts that you can customize inside the app. All right, let's go. I want to go into Finder now and show you how you can control all sorts of other things with the keyboard. For instance, here I am in the Finder and I've got, you know, window open and I can of course click on things I want. I can open up these folders. I can double click on a file here, open it. But this can all be controlled by the keyboard as well. So I'll move the pointer to the side. I'm going to use the arrow keys. If I go down, you see immediately it's going to select the first thing there. I can continue to go down. I can go to the right and open something up. I'm in list view. If I was in column view, it would go down into a column there. Um, right and left. I can go to one of these files. I can, if I press return, that's rename. But if I were to do Command O, it opens up the file. So really handy. Let me switch back using the app switcher there to this. And you can see I could do all sorts of things using the keyboard. I can navigate around in the Finder. Even in like icon view. I can navigate around here. If I want to open a folder, Command O will open it up. If I want to go back up, Command Up Arrow goes up a level. It's one of the most useful commands when using the Finder. Um, let's see here. Uh, there you can use also even for like throwing things away. Like, you know, let's uh, go here in the Finder, go in here, I'm going to do Command O. Uh, if I want to delete this, how do I drag it to the trash? Well, if you look here under File, you could see that uh, you've got Move to Trash is Command Delete. So I can use Command Delete to delete the file. Uh, you can also do things, let's, let's go into Safari here and let's talk about tabs. So let's open up a new tab in Safari and another tab in Safari. I've got several Safari tabs. Control tab. So the control key in tab lets you go between tabs. So you think of like command tab lets you go between apps. Control tab lets you go between tabs. Shift will uh, you know, control shift tab, you can go backwards. 
So you can navigate around in tabs but that also works in other apps. So I have a second tab here, Command T to open up a new tab and Control Tab lets me go between these tabs here inside of Finder. And then there's also uh, if you look here there's something called Tab Overview or Show All Tabs. Shift Command and Backslash. So Shift Command Backslash brings up all the tabs and you even have the ability to um, you know, add a new one there. Let's see I'm not getting good that doesn't seem like oh I can use Control Tab here to go between these. So same thing here in Safari. Uh, Shift Command Up Arrow Oh, let's see. Was that Shift Control up arrow? Let's take a look. Um, tab Overview should be Show Tab Overview, Shift Command, and Backslash. Now I guess that's not what I was doing before. And now I can't use the arrow keys here, but I can Control Tab. Oh, control tab is actually going to work inside this. But I can search tabs. So, you know, I can bring it down to this and get to a tab. So, eh, not great in terms of keyboard access there, but something to keep in mind. Oh, what else have we got? Oh, um, let's say I am going to save something. I'm going to go into text edit here again. Let's create a new document. And I'm going to save. It brings up the Save Dialog. So this is a typical dialog. Save Dialogs, Print Dialogs, things that come up that you have to deal with right now and you've got buttons like Save, Cancel, that kind of thing. Any button that's blue like this if I do Return it's going to activate it. So I could type a new name and hit Return and I can use this entire thing without ever having to go uh, to the trackpad or mouse. If I want to cancel though there are two ways to do that. One is Escape key. The Escape key will cancel. Another is Command period. That activates Cancel right there. So you have the ability to do that. Um, also if you are say going to quit something let's uh, you know if I were to quit uh, Command Q you see it says oh you haven't saved this. I can hit Return for Save and it will save with that file name. Command period for cancel and it won't quit. If I want delete, Command delete will actually activate the delete key here. Really handy one. If you want to create something quick in uh, text edit but you're done with it, you don't want it anymore, you quit and it says, oh do you want to save this? You don't have to navigate to delete. You can do Command delete. I'll do Command period to cancel there. Um, let's see. When you have any pop, any menu like this See that's like for selecting fonts. You may think you need to use the cursor or the mouse rather for this. Uh, but you actually can anytime you're in here it's like oh this is a long list. I want to jump right to the W's for the fonts. Hit W. See it jumps right down and then you can use the arrow keys to go up and down. So you know Helvetica I can type H E and Helvetica is there at the top. Let's do let's see copper plate. C O P and you can see how it jumps right there and I could you know uh, go up and down as I want. Any kind of list. Anything. Even like let's do like format. See this here? If I'm going to go to Outline I can go to O or actually I have to go into this menu. I go to O and it jumps down to it. Always remember you can use letters in different drop down and pop up menus to jump around. Uh, it's really handy. Especially if you know your alternative is just hitting the down arrow key a whole bunch of times. Um, let's go into I, you know I brought up this browser here with a form and notice that there's you know a bunch of fields here. Uh, you can use the Tab key to jump around and stuff. So let me uh, reload this page here. Uh, let's say okay a business question with this form. Um, if I use the Tab key, notice it selects the first item. <coughs> and I could go down to the next one, go down to the next one, and you can use Tab and Shift Tab to go back and forth. And it's a really handy way to navigate around in complex forms in most apps but most of the time you run into forms it's in the web browser. I mentioned the new shortcut keys for various things before. Uh, you have Control or uh, sorry FN or the globe key and M for the menu bar. You've got FN and A for the dock. You also have FN and C for 
control center. Really handy and you can't do anything else. So you can't down arrow unfortunately and select things in control center. Although I'm going to show you a way that you kind of can later on. <clears throat> you can um, – there's a lot uh, probably coming in the future I think with this. I think this is the beginning. Notification Center is FN and N and it brings it up. Which is handy even though you can't navigate around because sometimes you just want to see stuff like times or news or you know the weather or whatever. And you know FN and N to open and close the um, Notification Center is really handy. Uh, I said uh, F, 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 Globe key and D for dictation. For most apps you can go to you know uh, enter full screen is now Globe and F. So if I'm going to take this window here full screen, Globe and F, Globe and F to get out of it. Uh, emoji Viewer. If I'm going to type this you probably know the old keyboard shortcut. Control, Command, Space and it brings it up. But you can also do FN or Globe key and E for emoji. So that's really handy. So those are some good things to know. Um, now how about some other stuff. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of cool things that you can do with the keyboard go uh, from the Shortcuts app. So let's launch the Shortcuts app. Now the Shortcuts app I can create shortcuts and they don't have to be complex shortcuts. I'm creating a new one here. And let's say I just want to launch an app. That's it. I want to have a keyboard shortcut to launch an app. So I type launch here. It comes up with open app. That's fine. Use that. Let me click here to select the app. Which app do I want to launch? Let's uh, do calculator. Open calculator. And this we'll call this launch calculator. And now I have a shortcut that will work. Let's do it with the keyboard. <coughs> click here. I'm going to say add keyboard shortcut. I'm going to do control option command C for it and hope that nothing conflicts with that. Notice it says use this quick action services menu. That becomes live once I assign this keyboard shortcut. Let's hide shortcuts here. And if I look uh, in Text Edit Services I see Launch Calculator now because it's a service member. And there's the keyboard shortcut. So now in anything, Finder, Services, and see, I don't see it there. Launch Calculator. I don't see it with the keyboard shortcut which may indicate that there is a con conflict. Let's go back into Shortcuts and let's change this to uh, Shift, Control, Option, Command, C. And wow, that, let's not do that. Let's add keyboard shortcuts. Try it again. All right, all those things. And then let's go back to Finder and see. Yep, now, now it shows that there's no conflict there. So great, I'm in any app I want. Finder, for instance, I do all of that. It's going to launch Calculator because it's going to run that shortcut. Now you can do all sorts of things with this. Like let's change this to instead of launching uh, or opening calculator, I could open file, open file, and I could select a file to open. So if there's some file like every day I write into, like a diary or log file or something, I can actually assign a keyboard shortcut that opens up that file in the default app. Uh, I could do all sorts of Different things. I could have it, you know, speak the time. Let's uh, do that. Uh, date, and there we go. Speak, speak text. One goes into the other. Um, I can change some things about it. I'm still still calling it launch calculator. Can fix that later. Right now, if I use the keyboard shortcut. June third, two thousand twenty-two at ten forty-nine a.m. I assume you can hear that. It was loud enough. Uh, Hey, so if you you know ever want to you know have a keyboard shortcut where it'll tell you the time, um, there you go. All sorts of stuff. I mean, you could even do like if I do quit, I do quit app, but I could say quit not an app but all apps except you know Zoom. Don't quit Zoom. Now I have a keyboard shortcut for like oh my goodness I forgot I have a Zoom meeting right now. It's starting. I've got stuff all over my desktop. Run this shortcut. Everything quits. I'm now focused on Zoom. Um, so there's like things you can do like that. So don't look past shortcuts for doing things, combining things. Launch two apps. Launch, open two files, open four files that you need. Uh, all sorts of different things that you can do in shortcuts. So deep here and you can control it with just the keyboard universally on your Mac like that. Uh, some other stuff. Let's go into System Preferences. There is some stuff where you can do keyboard control. It's going to Keyboard, Keyboard. 
Uh, let's go to, uh, let's see, in shortcuts, use keyboard navigation to move focus between controls. So let's go, that's off right now. And if I go to Safari here and I'm in this window and I do tab, it's going to tab between these things and it's also going to hit some other stuff. Here's another field over here. Um, it's going to, you know, do various things. Let's go to say you know, the Mac Most homepage and I can do tab and it's going to go between various things here. Now if I turn this on, use keyboard navigation to move focus between controls, then it's going to actually go to different things in here. Should. Maybe let's take a look at text edit for a better example. Um, uh, text edit's not going to be good because it's going to go between these. So um, think if I tab here, I'm just going through files. I thought Safari would be a good example of this. Oh, you can see now when I tap through, you can saw, see how it, it highlighted those controls up here as I tab. There you go. So I can tab between various things with that on. But if I have that off, it's not going to do the same. It's not going to tab between those items. So you can use this to have more focus between controls as you use tab and use keyboard navigation, tab and shift tab. But there's like an ultimate, uh, you know, higher level to this. If I go, this is new in Monterey. If I go to accessibility, I go to full keyboard access. So I'm going to go in here to keyboard, enable full keyboard access. I've got options here. There's various things I can do and there's all these commands. And this is actually going to turn the tab key into a modifier key. See how this is highlighted? All the files are highlighted? That's the control I have selected now. But if I do tab um, and I do say tab H, oh, it is it is doing it on the wrong screen. See if I get it on the right screen. Tab H. No, nope, it's still going to do it on the wrong screen. Probably have to close everything with the finder. Interesting. Okay. So tab H usually brings up controls here, but unfortunately it's doing it on the screen I'm not using. So I can't really show you that. But it allows you to do lots of things. Like for instance, I can move forward between items. Notice how it's up here. It's moving all through these items here, just tabbing forward. It gives me much more control over what basically almost anything I can click I can get to if I have enable full keyboard access turned on. And I can activate anything up that's highlighted with the space. If I'm inside of a group so it shows a bunch of files, I can use the arrow keys. Let's see if I can get back here. So see how I'm inside a group here? Now I can use let's see, tab to get to that group and arrow keys to move around in it. And Space actually will then select things. This takes some practice. I don't think this is meant to be like something you occasionally use. This is something you use all the time and you really get used to. But it's definitely something you should know about um, and that you should, uh, you know, if you really want full keyboard access, you can use. I believe if you're using full keyboard access, then you can do FN and C. For control center and then I can tab and see how I can use control center now. Shift tab to go back. I can go uh, you know to something else. Uh, let's see display and I can do up and down arrow. So you, you can control control center and other things if you have full keyboard access turned on. So something for you to play around with. Um, let's go and look at some other cool things. Mouse keys. Another accessibility function is mouse keys. If you want to control everything with the keyboard, you can do pointer control, alternate control methods, enable mouse keys, and now if you look under options here, there's some options. Now the keys uh, 7, 8, and 9 are um, used. Let's see. No, it's not going to do it. Hold on. Keyboard, pointer control, mouse keys. I have full keyboard access off. 
Oh, because I have a, I'm sorry, I have a numeric keypad. If you have a numeric keypad, it uses the numeric keypad. If you don't have a numeric keypad, it's going to use uh, other keys. Uh, I think it tells you in the help here. <coughs> I believe it's uh, 789UIOJKL as kind of a trackpad of keys with I being clicking. With my keyboard here, I'm actually using, you know, the, uh, I have the numeric keypad. I'm actually using the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 there and a 5 for clicking. So I can actually hold the 8 key down, go up, hold the 7 key down, go to the left, and turn it off by clicking with the 5. There you go. So not that handy really unless your trackpad or mouse is broken and you need to be able to do something like right now while you wait to get a new one. Um, let's see. Uh, op, uh, some quick things I want to show you. I, I showed you screenshots before, but I think it's worth looking at again. Screenshots, a lot of people, like these are some of my least favorite keyboard shortcuts. These, because these are the old ones. This one here does everything. Shift Command 5 brings up this whole set of controls here and lets you choose all of your options. So certainly if you need to save the picture of the screen as a file and you need to do it over and over and over again really quickly, then learn this keyboard shortcut. But if it's occasionally you need to do it, forget these four keyboard shortcuts and just know Shift Command 5 to access all screen capture and recording options. Um, here's a cool thing uh, I often get asked, hey, it looks like you can do everything with keyboard shortcuts except assign tags to files, right? I want to assign a tag to this file. If I go under file, you can see there's tags dot dot dot. Great. I want to bring that up with a keyboard shortcut. App shortcuts plus. Let's do tags dot 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 in what? Finder. Keyboard shortcut. Option command T. Great. Now that should work, right? I go back to Finder. Let's look, File, Tags. Nope, it's not applied. It doesn't work. The tags dot 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 seems to like buck the whole trend and not be usable. Except you can use it. Here's what you got to do. You go to Finder Preferences. You go to Tags. Here in Tags, see these favorite tags? You got to get rid of them. Drag each one out until there are no favorite tags left anymore. Favorite tags are just something you click anyway. Any tags that you want to see really easily, just check them here. Okay. Now, when I go to File, Tags, the favorites are gone and Tags dot 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 has the keyboard shortcut. So, Command T, there it is. Those items that I selected with those check marks, they're right underneath and I can arrow down to them and easily assign them and I could easily just type. So you could see like that. So super easy now to apply tags using keyboard shortcut. The trick was in preferences to get rid of the favorites out of this box. Another thing is keyboard navigation in the finder. You know, you've got the sidebar here. You can't access that with keyboard shortcuts. But the Go menu has a ton of common locations you can jump to, like your home folder, like desktop, like documents, and all of that. In addition, you can use Go to Folder, Shift Command G like that and type a path. And the path doesn't have to be perfect. Like I can start typing doc for documents and it's going to kind of try to figure out what it is I want to do. So it should, let's help it out here. It should come up with documents right there. Oops. Let's do tilde slash documents. So you can see how it goes to it like that. But now in the future, let's see if I just type documents because it's recent. You see now it's got those selected. So Shift Command G and typing allows you to get anywhere in the Finder, kind of like you're using Terminal. Um, another thing I want to point out, as you know, kind of want to uh, finish this off here. I if you go to System Preferences, Keyboard, there's this button for Modifier Keys. This allows you to change the modifier keys and control the caps lock key. So for instance, I've got caps lock set to be an FN key, an additional FN key because my keyboard has it all the way over on the right because it's an extended keyboard. 
So I now have an FN key where the caps lock key is. But I could set it to caps lock. I could set it to no action and kill the caps lock key. Or I can make it another command key or whatever I want. You could switch control with command and command with control if you like. I don't recommend doing that. But it's useful to know you have those functions here. Um, another thing I want to point out is the video here. I want to show you a video. I'm not going to have time to show you this, but I've got this special video I did a while ago on key bindings. Key bindings are a super advanced technique for keyboard shortcuts. Basically, when you touch a key on your keyboard, it sends a signal to your Mac that says this key was pressed. The Mac looks that up in a table and says, oh, you pressed the letter A. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh, the letter A means you've typed A. And that's what happens. You can get in between that and basically say, no, 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 the letter A no longer means A. It means something else. And you do that with key bindings. And I show you how in this video, I'll link to it, or you can just search for this. Uh, you know, search back most key bindings. This should come up first. Um, and there's some interesting things because there are like keys that map to functions. Like, you know, obviously the modifier keys or you know pressing the up arrow or the home button or things like that. There are some functions that are not mapped to from any key on the keyboard that do some special things. And you can map something to it. So you can uh, you know do some cool stuff. It's it's pretty advanced. You have to edit these little system files. They're not system files, they're actually user library files. So you're not changing the system, you're changing your user account. But um but it's worth looking at uh, even if you think you might not use it. Check that out. And the last thing I want to point out is uh, you might run out of keys, right? I mean, how many keyboard shortcuts can you possibly assign? Well, uh, a couple of ways to get more keys on your keyboard. Uh, one way is to get a control surface. You can buy like, an expensive thing. People that stream and uh, you know do music uh, and video editing have like these control decks that are like extra buttons and you plug it in and it creates these extra buttons and they've got software and they can do like shortcuts with the software. MIDI keyboard sometimes you can do stuff like that. If you have an extended keyboard, one with the numeric keypad on the right, each one of those number keys is actually a different key than the number keys at the top of the keyboard. So you could assign a keyboard shortcut to say command numpad2. Numpad2 different than the number 2. And then you now have like all of these extra keys. I mean, you've got nine keys, and then you can do command, you can do control, you can do option, you can do option command, control command, all of that. A lot of keyboard shortcuts you can assign to a extended keyboard and not interfere with all the letters and other default keyboard shortcuts. If you don't have an extended uh, keyboard, you can always get one of these. Uh, you can get wired little uh, keypads for 20 bucks, 30 bucks for like a Bluetooth one. And basically, it just adds a second keyboard to your Mac. You can have multiple keyboards on your Mac. Um, but this adds one that has the num keys and other things uh, on it. And then you could assign keyboard shortcuts using those. So if you find, say, you're using GarageBand to edit music or iMovie to do stuff, and you really want to have keyboard shortcuts and you want to do it cheaply without buying like a $200 you know, Stream Deck thing with buttons on it, you can get like a $20 keypad. Plug that in and assign keyboard shortcuts to that. So um, that's a ton of stuff. Boy, I didn't even get to every single thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, but I, I think this gives you plenty to investigate uh, if you like using uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, and you know, thanks for watching.